When were the Gospels written? Most scholars say that the Gospel of Mark dates between 66 through 70 AD, Matthew and Luke around 85 to 90, and John 90 to 100. Skeptics like Bart Ehrman imply that they're too late to be reliable, as a decades-long time gap leaves plenty of room for myths and legends to creep in. When it comes to history, chronological closeness matters. But where exactly are critics coming up with these later dates? When you dive into the literature, you find that many biblical scholars date Matthew, Mark, and Luke past 70 AD for one main reason. Jesus' prophecies regarding the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple. The so-called scholarly theory is that Jesus never said these things. They were put into his mouth to make him out to be an amazing prophet. Yes, I'm serious. Almost the entire late dating scheme is primarily based on the question-begging, anti-supernaturalistic premise that Jesus could have never prophesied the coming devastation of Jerusalem in such detail. Prophecy is on par with leprechauns and unicorns. But there's a growing chorus of scholars who challenge these assumptions, and they're not all hardcore Christians. Even some atheist scholars like Maurice Casey or James Crossley have challenged late dating. Well, why is that? For starters, if you know anything about Israel's history, Jerusalem's downfall had happened before in 586 BC. Let's take a look at 2 Kings 25, 8 through 10. It reads, On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, commander of the imperial guard and official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the imperial guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem. It's these kind of details, the burning of the temple and the seizures of the walls, that some say can only be described after 70 AD, but they happened before. God's prophets were often the announcers of the curse of the law for disobeying God's commandments. Jeremiah said Jerusalem would be destroyed because of their sin, and Jesus followed suit. As New Testament scholar C.H. Dodd has pointed out, so far as any historical event has colored the picture, it is not Titus' capture of Jerusalem in 70 AD, but Nebuchadnezzar's capture in 586 BC. There is no single trait of the forecast which cannot be documented directly out of the Old Testament. Second, Luke points out that a little-known prophet named Agabus prophesied the famine coming during the days of Emperor Claudius. This was fulfilled in the 40s. But Jesus, the earth-shattering main figure of his gospel, foretells the destruction of Jerusalem and all we get is crickets? This seems a bit odd to say the least. Why doesn't Luke say Jesus' words were fulfilled in the days of Emperor Titus? I have a theory, and hear me out on this one, maybe because the fulfillment hadn't happened yet. Finally, Jesus' words regarding the temple's destruction doesn't make a lot of sense unless they happen before the event. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus says that when people see the abomination of desolation, they should flee to the mountains. Mark and Matthew say that Jesus commanded them to pray that it doesn't happen in winter. Matthew includes pray that it doesn't happen on the Sabbath. Luke says when Jerusalem was surrounded by armies, let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter in it. Here's the thing. We know from history that Titus destroyed the temple in late summer. Why pray that something doesn't happen at a particular time if it already happened? And what's the point of Luke adding a warning about not entering into the city if the city was already ruined? The late dating scenario is built on a flimsy foundation. It's no wonder that E.P. Sanders, not a particularly conservative scholar, has concluded that there is no material in Mark which must be dated after 70 AD. But let's take things a step further. What if we could determine Luke was written before 62 AD? Enter Adolf van Harnack. Harnack was a liberal scholar who denied the possibility of miracles, and yet he changed his mind about the dating of the Gospels based on some very important evidence found in the book of Acts, Paul's death or the absence thereof. Let's think about this for just a minute. Eight of the final chapters of Acts follow closely the progress of Paul's trial, and then the narrative abruptly ends before it even happens. Luke gives us great detail of Jesus' trial and crucifixion in his gospel, but seemingly drops the ball in Acts after carefully paralleling Paul's sufferings with Christ. The story just breaks off with Paul left preaching in Rome while still under house arrest. But we know from history that Paul was martyred in around 62 AD, and nowhere in Acts is Paul treated as if his death was presupposed, rather we get a very contrary impression. Harnack notes that this doesn't make a lick of sense. To leave us hanging about Paul's fate would be bad craftsmanship and not at all in line with Luke's normally thorough character if there was more to tell. Harnack writes, The concluding verses of the Acts of the Apostles, taken in conjunction with the absence of any reference in the book to the result of the trial of St. Paul and to his martyrdom, make it in the highest degree probable that the work was written at a time when Paul's trial in Rome had not yet come to an end. Harnack goes on to argue that it's very weird that Luke, a detailed historian who notes the famine in Jerusalem and the expulsion of the Jews from Rome under Claudius, has nothing to say about the Jewish rebellion, the temple's destruction, or Nero's persecution of the Christians in Rome. 
and he mentions nothing about the death of James, Jesus' brother, even though he's featured as a prominent member in the Jerusalem church in Acts. And there's nothing said about Peter's execution, even though it's mentioned in John's later gospel. Peter is the main character of the first 12 chapters of Acts. Luke does, however, note the death of Stephen, who wasn't even a member of the Twelve, and he mentions the martyrdom of James, the son of Zebedee. And one last thing, why would Luke sit on his work for a couple of decades rather than immediately send it to Theophilus, the recipient of his writings? What's the holdup? On the contrary, if there was no sign of scheduling Paul's hearing, it may have been Luke's ambition to get his work to Theophilus while still in Rome, waiting for Paul's trial, which prompts the sudden ending of his book. There's nothing implausible about Luke stopping his account once he got to the present day. Similarly, why did the first century historian Josephus bring his story to an end when he got up to the present day? Because there was nothing left to say. If Luke used Mark and possibly Matthew as a source, that means they were written before Luke. And with everything I've mentioned here, Acts was written before 62 AD. And Acts, of course, comes after Luke's gospel. So we're not talking about the gospels being written 40 to 60 years after the fact. We're talking about a decade or two while Peter, James, and John, and other eyewitnesses to Jesus were still alive and kicking. This clearly is not too late for them to be considered unreliable. There's only one bad reason to reject the early dating of the Gospels, and there are several good reasons to believe that they were written early. Thank you.